Hi lovelies, how you guys, how you guys, how you guys? Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Sarah Martucci. I'm a psychic medium, certified crystal healer, paranormal investigator. I like to consider myself the local cryptid. Uh, if you've heard of the Blair Witch, but you haven't seen me and her in the same room, all I'm saying is, who's haunting who? <laughs> who's the real Blair Witch here? Also, too, uh, String Cheese is my lifeblood. Sasquatch is my twin flame. <laughs> Uh, welcome, you guys. <laughs> if you guys are into the same weird shit that I am, welcome. Come on in. Um, this is where I do a little something I lovingly refer to as astrofuckery, where I talk about the astrology for the week and how I think that it can help us in some practical, realistic ways. Um, and then I pull three paws of cards. You choose any and all that you're into, okay? All right. So if you're into it, you don't mind a little bit of cussing, some well-placed F-bombs. Uh, come on in, come on in. Now, if this doesn't sound good or this isn't your jam, you may want to boot scoot along or this is going to make your ears bleed. Okay? <laughs> okay? Okay! You guys, let's get into the astrofuckery this week. It's it's a big one, all right? Uh, first, actually, tomorrow on Tuesday, Venus moves into the sign of Capricorn. So if you guys remember Venus, Venus is the planet of love, beauty, money, what we value. Actually, a lot of people don't know Venus actually rules money. So I see it more in like what we value, but also cold hard cash. God bless. <laughs> okay. Listen, whenever she moves into the sign of uh, Capricorn here, she literally means fucking business. Okay. So if you're not showing up with your actions, if you're not bringing the heat, if things aren't on equal terms, she does not have the time of day for you. If you can't bring it, she doesn't want it. Uh, genuinely and honestly. Okay. Um, I would say too with this, because it's in an earth sign, like the love here, it needs to be practical, realistic. We we need to understand what the, what the actual fuck is going on. So how much money do we have in the bank? How is this person dressing? Can they cook? Can they clean? Do they own their own home? All these things, she's going to be looking at them. Capricorn traditionally rules the 10th house. So this is around our career and reputation. And so also too, I think Venus and Capricorn, kind of like Venus and Leo is like, um, their partner, they need to be able to be on the same level. They need to reflect where I'm at right now, what I value, what I seek, what I understand. You know what I'm saying? All the things, all the beautiful things of, of Venus here, but with Capricorn and that earth sign, like it's got to make sense. Uh, this person needs to match my 401k that I'm putting in. Do you know what I mean? Uh, my partner here needs to be a partner, not someone that I take care of. We we want grown-ups here. And, and you know, people that are actually showing up for the work that they love to do in the world. Or, um, you know, taking very well care of themselves. I love Capricorn too. Listen, Venus and Capricorn also, and any of the Capricorn placements are kind of well known for being workaholics here. And so a lot of times Venus and Capricorn is not really known for getting, look, they can marry other people and they do, but a lot of times they marry their work. And so what's most important to them? So for a lot of us, there might be an emphasis starting on the 23rd about like our work, our career, what we're doing, what we value around that. Are we getting paid the money that we fucking deserve for the fucking work that we do? No longer are we going to sit here and let people walk all over us, use us up, not pay us what the fuck we're due. So I think this is also an important time frame, especially maybe like if you don't have a career or work that you're big into right now, but what is most important to you? What have you been putting all your time, energy, effort into? And so is this thing reciprocal? Can it show up the way that I am? Is it ready to do the work like the work that I'm doing? So just pay attention to Venus moving into Capricorn. I love this placement because, again, she doesn't fuck around, all right? She sees things very clearly. Um, and again, like, are you ready? Can you be up here on my fucking level? Are you going to do the work? All right, can you show me with the work that you've done uh, what the hell you bring here? And so are, are we on an equal playing field? Um, I kind of dig that. Just because I think it helps keep everybody grounded, realistic, what's practically happening in here in the now. And again, this value system is upped, not only for our partnerships, but for ourselves too. So maybe even expecting more from ourselves or just making sure that we're standing up to our own standards, whatever they may be. All right, all right. Now, then we move into, I think it's the, oh God, I think it's the 25th. Uh, we got a full moon in the sign of Leo. Uh, now, listen, I like a full moon in the sign of Leo. It, it's going, listen, it's a fire sign. Leo, she likes her attention. <laughs> oh, yay! She's the performer of the, <laughs> of the astrological wheel. Uh, traditionally, Leo rules the fifth house and is ruled by the sun. 
So this is love. This is pleasure. This is happiness. The fifth rules, uh, fifth house rules are children, gambling, sports, having a good fucking time. So I think this full moon in the sign of Leo is, is actually going to be, or can be a really beautiful day here. Um, and again, whenever full moons come up, something's reaching a culmination. It's also kind of shining a bright spotlight on what's most important to us. So knowing where Leo sits in your chart will also be helpful too. Uh, Par example, uh, if you got Leo in the first house, maybe you're a Leo rising. This is possibly going to be about the way that you present yourself to the world. Maybe we're understanding and seeing something more clearly about ourselves. Maybe after Venus moving into Capricorn, we realize we need to put more value on ourselves and who the fuck we are instead of maybe everybody else around us. Don't forget yourself. Uh, maybe Leo is in your eighth house. This is around like shared resources, um, taxes, death, birth, sex, rebirth, all, all the really taboo stuff, um, you know, that people don't normally talk about. Uh, maybe for you, this is about really looking at your partnerships right now, who you're sharing resources with, whether that's love, friendship, family, doesn't matter. And making sure that everybody's showing up the way that they say that they are. Um, everybody's doing this maybe also too with Leo here, like bring in some love, bring in some joy, bring in some frivolity or happiness in here too. have a little fun. Uh, cause traditionally the eighth house is ruled by Scorpio, uh, you know, Pluto and Mars here, that can be a really heavy house. So to have Leo there, it's like, let's bring a little sunshine. Let's bring a little fresh joy into this. Maybe again, you're looking at your partnerships and saying, how can I revive this? How can I bring a little happiness in here? Or is this thing really fucking working for me? So hopefully you guys get the jam on that. Uh, so look to see where Leo's at in your chart to see where we're kind of getting a spotlight right now. What's important with the value system moving to here into the sign of Capricorn. Again, Venus and Capricorn. This is going to be influencing this full moon as well. And so how are we, what is our value system? What's most important to us? And how can we also take that with this full moon and Leo and shine brightly as our own unique self? Now, We've got, this is Aquarius season. So Aquarius season is more about like the masses here, okay? So this is like the wider group at large. So while this full moon is kind of going to be personal here, how am I personally shining? How am I personally, in like whatever house this is for you, how am I personally shining? How am I personally tuning into myself? What is my value system? And am, am I raising up to that level too? Things of that nature. Um, I think this week, I think this week for everybody, with everything at play here, <laughs> let's make sure that we're sitting down at this full moon and we're paying attention again to what the fuck we value. Make sure that like, maybe you do like a five year review, like every five years, just sitting down and looking at things and just kind of taking a tally. What's most important to me here? Am I on that same pathway? Is what I'm doing making sense? And am I doing it as my own individual self? And with Aquarius season here, how is being my own individual self also helping the wider masses? Um, maybe for some of you guys, how am I being my own personal self also helping my family as a whole or my community as a whole? When I tune in and I am my own unique self, I know who I am. I know what the fuck I'm about. I allow myself to shine brightly with whatever other themes are going on here. And I now understand what my fucking value is. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> trying to tell me who and what the fuck I am because when I know myself and I know my own fucking story guys all that can do is help the wider masses your community your family maybe your little unit here whatever the fuck you've got going on so again at this full moon sit down look at yourself don't be afraid to reassess and make sure that you're showing up to your own kind of value system here question that value system make sure it's actually coming from you and whatever the fuck goes on do not be afraid to shine brightly in who you are what you're about and maybe now what you value around yourself okay last thing i want to say i think the next day i think it's the 26th um uranus is actually going direct woo so listen that's like all planets or thundercats go y'all okay that means i think everything's direct until april like april 1st like literally like april 1st <laughs> okay so we've got a little over a month to just run nilly willy in the fucking streets <laughs> okay at least that's what it feels like for me there's nothing holding us back here there's no internal reflection like these retrogrades have been doing kind of bringing up old stuff making us sit down force and like look at things and with uranus in the mix like 
Guys, this is like unbridled chaos, all right? Liberation though, it's liberation. Whatever happens here usually is a shock to the system or like a kick out of the nest or whatever the fuck's going on here. It gets us to wake up for a second and maybe rebuild whatever the fuck fell apart that wasn't built well to begin with. Or just understanding like, how do we move? It's almost like the tower card. Everything's got to fall apart that doesn't work so that we can rebuild maybe with new people, new places, new things, or just understanding what went wrong here so we can rebuild in a better way that actually makes sense for our fucking lives and where the fuck we're at. So listen, with Uranus going direct here, that means that, yeah, we're going to have more of those maybe chaotic lightning kind of moments out in the world again. But to me, this feels like after the internal work that we've been doing, the internal chaos or the internal like uh, restructuring that we've been going through here, whatever happens in the outer world, not only are we stronger because of the work that we've done, but now after this full moon and Venus moving into Capricorn, y'all this week, just good luck to anybody trying to step up in our way or tell us that we can't or that we're not allowed, like literally good luck. <laughs> All right. Because I think the whole lot of us are done with that shit. We're ready to start tuning into what we want. And the more that we do that, we understand our own gifts and abilities. And again, what we bring to the table, not only does this help us personally to shine brighter, it gives a yes to other people to do the same. It spreads like wildfire throughout your family, your community, your the whole. That's the point. So my thing for this full moon and this week, be your own damn self, whatever the hell that looks like. I don't care if you have a robot voice. I don't care if you can't help farting every five minutes. <laughs> or maybe you're like me and you can't stop eating donuts okay whatever or just being in love with sasquatch okay? whatever your uniqueness looks like embrace it know yourself so that nobody can ever come along and tell you what the fuck your story is and so that your foundation is built with a strength that no matter what the fuck happens nothing can take you down ever the fuck again all right you guys are sick of the astro fuckery. I sure the fuck am. Um, there's more stuff going on this week, but you guys know I like to focus on one or two things just to kind of help you guys. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you guys can use that throughout your week. Again, look to your natal chart. See which house Leo rules so that you can get a better understanding of what that means for you and what this full moon is bringing up for you this week, okay? All right, remember, pick any and all piles that speak to you. It doesn't matter. You can pick one, two, or all three. I don't fucking care. <laughs> all right? This is up to you. Use your intuition to choose here, all right? I'll see you guys in the next screen. <laughs>Card pile number one, you guys got some interesting cards this week. Let's fucking talk about it. <laughs> Your first one is the four of coins. Boom shakalaka. Then you got the four of wands, two fours. And then finally you got the eight of swords. Let's fucking talk about it. So guys, if we were looking for a yes or no this week, I would say this combination would be a... I <laughs> I would say this combination would probably be a yes this week as long as you are able to sit down and have a real talk about something that's important. As long as you're open to that, to have like a real conversation or face somebody face to face. If we're ready for that, that's a yes this week. Um, let's get into it. So uh, traditionally at the four of coins here, this is going to talk about... This is kind of keeping things close. This is kind of hoarding stuff sometimes. A lot of times too, I see the four of coins is also like foundation. This is foundation setting. So we're trying to build a better foundation here. For some people with this card, this can even talk about like literally building a home from the foundation up. Um, so for some of you guys this week, that might be coming to fruition if we've been looking forward and or hoping for that to, to come up for us. Uh, some of you guys might literally be baking, breaking ground, uh, uh, like building your own home from the foundation up, maybe purchasing some land, things of that nature. But the four of coins is kind of like, what are we investing in is what it's asking. And with coins here, it's practical, realistic, grounded. This needs to make fucking sense. This isn't some spot, you know, pie in the sky bullshit. This is because of the work that I'm doing. And so traditionally we see like uh, in most other decks, even though there's like four coins here, this guy's digging. Uh, traditionally we see a guy sitting down, holding on to four coins, kind of hoarding them. So again, it's just kind of saying that maybe we've got some boundaries up here. Maybe there's also a need to feel like we've got boundaries with another person. Um, like, is he burying those coins or is he uncovering them? 
you know, good question here with this card. So I think with the four of coins, even though this might feel a little uneven here, I do again want to say that like we've made something here or we've created something here or we've got something important here that we might be holding really fucking tightly onto it. Is this a moment where we can relax a little bit and understand that like this is ours, like this can't be taken from us, okay? Um, also too, with the number four here, I want to reference back to the month of April or the month of April around the fourth of a month, four weeks, four days, you get how the number four could play into this, but y'all know traditionally I read these like the months. Now next four of wands. This is a very celebratory card y'all. Like this is a beautiful card. Like this is coming home after like maybe like a couple here getting married, coming home, celebrating with their friends and family. And, uh, this is also another one of my cards, um, especially in a love reading where you would be moving in together with the person that you are with. Now with the four of wands, this card also talks about friendships. So I do feel like that's going to be a huge highlight for a lot of people this week. Their friendships are going to be very important. Are we sitting down and having important conversations as equals? There needs to not be a power imbalance here. So if there's a power imbalance, we got a fucking problem. Sit down, hash this shit out. Let's figure out what the fuck is going on. If you don't feel comfortable, and especially if you got some boundaries up here with the four of coins, maybe that's warranted. But again, with the four of wands, it's saying, how can we fall back on that friendship? Is there a friendship core? All right. And then finally, with the eight of swords, um, this is a more difficult card. The eight of swords is kind of difficult here because look at that chick. She's got... But look, yeah, she's bound, but look, there's totally open up in front of her. The swords are only on the sides. All she has to do is flip her arms up to get that thing off and take off the blindfold. So listen, you guys aren't going to like this, but <laughs> sorry, but a lot of times with the eight of swords, this is a self, this is one of my self-inflicted cards. So we can very much get up out of a situation, but we're either choosing to stay stuck. Maybe we don't aware, we aren't aware that we are keeping ourselves stuck in the muck. And with swords here, this is going to talk about our mental space. So where are we mentally? So mentally here, this is also the card of having some fucking boundaries up. And so we feel like we need to. Uh, but if we do feel stuck right now mentally, the call is coming from inside the house. Okay? Okay. <laughs> also, too, with the number eight here, I'm going to reference back to the month of August. I'm looking around the eighth of a month, eight weeks, eight days, eight months. Okay? Swords, we're going to move quicker. Wands is going to move quickly. Earth is going to take its long fucking time. So I do want to say with the four of coins here, there might be a reference back to the month of April or, or again, we're working four months, four days. That's going to be a much longer period. Now around love and relationships, this is interesting because this can talk about a couple different things here. For some of you guys, we may have invested in a friendship or a relationship here that we're feeling like we've got some serious boundaries up against. On one hand, we don't want to let this thing go because maybe we've invested a lot of time, love, and energy into this thing. But on the other hand, mentally, it's not making us happy. Uh, maybe we're not on the same field anymore. Or when we talk to this person, it feels like they're only judging us. Whatever the fuck's going on here, we've got serious boundaries up with somebody. We don't want to let go, but we also don't want to be around anymore. This is a shitty fucking place to be, y'all. How can we, if you want to salvage this relationship, and I don't care, friendship, family, farting back and forth forever, doesn't matter, whatever this relationship is, how can we lean back on the friendship core if there is one? Or if we're ready to heal this thing or do better within this, how do we build that? We got to start with the friendship. We can't start anywhere else. Friendship and then on up. I do want to say, too, with this card, it always makes me think in this deck. I love this deck. The Somnia Tarot, if you guys are into it. Um, this deck, it makes me feel like sit down with somebody and have a meal. Okay? Maybe food is the way to somebody's heart here. Um, or having a conversation maybe in a restaurant in a public place if we're not sure how the person's going to react. Uh, things of that nature. But somehow food, sitting down, having a conversation is indicated here. How can we compromise? Or at least talk about this thing. If this is your real friend, you should be able to communicate. Listen, again, I don't care what kind of relationship this is. If you cannot, at the very core base of it, communicate your bare bones, basic fucking needs and feelings, this ain't it. And first you need to sit down and make sure, hey, is this my trauma that I feel uncomfortable speaking? Or is it because of this person and their actions? Maybe even a combination of both. So make sure that you know where you're coming from, okay? Before we just say it's all this other person. Because guys, sometimes our trauma can inform our shit. All right, so just be cognizant, be present. <clears throat> Interesting. If this is around any other type of relationship this week, 
for some of you guys, <laughs> probably around love and like relationship, like love relationships here. For some of you guys, you want to move forward with something. We want to move past like maybe the friend zone, <clears throat> or maybe we want to move past like the dating initial zone here. We're ready to move in. We're ready to celebrate, but we're scared shitless to do the fucking thing. So listen to me again, for some of you guys around relationships, sit down and face your trauma from the past. Was this a previous relationship that fucked your shit up and now you don't feel comfortable and you got all your guard up? Even though with this person, they've shown you without a doubt, they are your friend, they do support you, they do love you, and they want you to move in. Pay attention if trauma is informing you here, if you're not able to be present with yourself, or if you've got major freak out and anxiety over it. First, you should always listen to yourself. I'm always going to tell you that. Fucking listen to that. But investigate it just a little bit further. See where the call is coming from. Is it coming from inside the house or outside the house? Okay? Or is it ringing in both locations? We may have to pick up the phone in both. All right? So let's just make sure this week, whatever reservations or freak out that we have, just know that obviously a part of you doesn't want to let this go. You want to move in with this person. There might even be a possibility here that you guys are like literally building your own home together. Maybe you, maybe this is your fiance and like, you're so excited. You want all this stuff, but again, it scares you mentally. Maybe growing up, you didn't see healthy relationships and you're worried this is only going to end in divorce. Make sure that you are working on your childhood traumas so that you can be present and aware of this so that you don't self-sabotage so that you don't fucking, you know, run. What was that? The runaway bride fucking movies. I don't fuck. You know what I'm saying? So you just peace out because you're terrified as shit. So make sure that we're doing a personal check this week in our own mental space. Make sure that we're, we're not holding ourselves back, pushing people at arm's length because we're scared to move forward in terms of relationships or whatever the fuck we're going towards this week. Just double check on that, okay? Around anything else for relationships. I'm telling y'all, food is key. <laughs> I'm not fucking around. If you got to have an important conversation with somebody this week, sit down and have a meal because I really think that that's going to help chill everything out or make that person their favorite meal. Somehow food is involved here. Okay. Um, if you got to have important conversations, establish stuff, maybe this is even for some of you guys, especially if you're in a committed relationship this week, maybe we have to sit down and talk about finances. Boo hiss. You know, nobody wants to do that. I don't want to do Nobody wants to fucking do that. All right. But maybe if we sit down and we come at this like it's us against the problem instead of us fighting each other and the fucking problem. Work together as a team. Be friends to each other around this so that we can help each other either get through this financial issue um, or work on whatever the fuck we need to rework around our foundations within the relationship. But especially if this is around finances, make sure that we're investing in the right thing. And for some of you guys, you literally might be investing in your home or for a home or literally in, in the land itself to break ground and make your own home. Congratulations to you guys. All right. Around work and career. This is interesting. Somebody might, oh, some of you guys are having a rough time at work right now. You're trying to figure out where the fuck you belong. Where the fuck do I got maybe two or three, four different things I want to do here. I don't know which place to invest and I don't know where to go. I think we need to, or maybe we either feel overwhelmed in terms of the options or we feel closed in that we only have a few things that we can choose here this week. Sit down and call upon somebody here that's a friend in one of these spaces. I feel like we just sit down and have that conversation, relieve our fear here. Just by having the conversation relieves the fear so that we can make a better choice around where we want to get this job or put our energy, effort, time, whatever we've got um, here physically to give to this thing or to receive back from it, okay? Maybe even we're looking at some of these jobs and like, man, they just aren't paying enough. So reach out is what I'm saying this week around career and work. Reach out to the people, places, and spaces that you know can help you get the resources that you need and relieve some of your fucking freak out. You don't have to do this all by yourself, work and career. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Quit. Work smarter, not harder. Why would you do that? You're not all by... It is a trauma response to think that you have to handle it all by yourself. We don't have to do that anymore, love. You now know people that actually will show up, that you know can show up, want to show up. Let's call upon those people. The problem starts when you're calling upon people, places, and spaces that you know can't, that you know won't, and that will never be able to, but you're still expecting them. We got to pay attention to our expectations this week, all right? So make sure that we're reaching out to the right places, spaces, farts and aces. <laughs> 
okay, to make sure, <laughs> to make sure <laughs> everybody's on board and we don't have to do this whole mental fuckery with ourselves anymore. We're not by ourselves. We deserve to be in partnership. And then if you need help this week, call out to the people that, you know, actually can help you. All right. All right. Um, again, weird reference back to the month of April, looking at, and August, um, and or I'm looking at it this year, okay? So just hold on, maybe by the springtime here for some of you guys, the work situation will kind of even out here, we'll have a better understanding of what we're doing, make sure to have the important conversations with the people that are actually your friends. All right, in terms of health, forever and always, coins <clears throat> are going to be moles, and freckles. So get your skin checked. Just make sure it's okay. For some of you guys, I don't know. I don't know why I'm picking this up. For some of you guys, I feel like you just lost a pair of glasses that I feel like you just bought and you're going to have to buy another pair. Could you just buy in bulk, babe? Okay. <laughs> if you keep losing your glasses this week, can you just buy like that four pack or that four pair or something? <laughs> okay. Just saying for some of you guys, uh, some of you guys this week, Y'all just need, this is wild for some of you guys with health. I don't know if that's a weird thing to say to some of you guys, but some of you guys just need like, and I guess also too, I'm questioning myself because I've had this conversation with a couple people just today, but some of you guys have an iron deficiency. You guys need to go and make sure that you're taking an iron supplement, taking care of yourself. Okay. Uh, we need to make sure that our blood is fortified literally. All right. So just make sure your blood's okay. Um, in some way, shape or form for some of you guys. Uh, I would also like some of you guys to make sure your liver functions doing okay here. Check your iron levels. Make sure that you're not anemic. Um, some of you guys this week could really fucking benefit from acupuncture for real, for real guys, especially with the eight of swords here. And especially if you're having a hard time moving energy throughout your body, or you're feeling stagnant in certain places, go get some acupuncture, especially if you've never tried it before. All right. And just let them kind of work their magic on you. I don't know why it works. It works. Ah, all right. Uh, for some of you guys, uh, I would say the last thing around health and healing this week is make sure that, listen, <clears throat> maybe some of you guys feel like the reason why you haven't been eating better is because you don't have the money to invest in it. I'm not trying to be violent. Okay. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying to you that we need to be making if you can, if you're able to, if you have the finances, because I don't know about y'all, but like fucking groceries are astro fucking nomical price wise right now. If you're able to take a certain chunk of money every month, pay attention to your money and put it towards your food goals here. Okay. Instead of spending it on the junk food that you've been eating previously, take all that McDonald's cash and put it into your good eating fund. I know. I want to tell me to fuck off too. <laughs> hey, but for real, for some of you guys, sit down and look at the way that you're eating. Look at the food that you're putting inside of your body. And I understand, and it is a legitimate excuse that I don't have the money. But baby, if we sit down and we rework some of this stuff, we should have the finances or we'll be able to find a way to make this food thing work better for us. Because I feel like for a lot of you guys, the root core of your health this week has to do around the food that you're taking in. Okay. Is. All right. Anything else this week for card pound number one? Um, I would just say, please, please, please face whatever trauma is coming up for you guys. If some of you guys need therapy, get in there and talk to somebody. Talk therapy is going to help you or the EMDR process. Invest in yourself. Holy fuck. So that we can maneuver and work through the mental health issues that are coming up. Okay. Um, I think I'm just, I'll be the Oprah of therapy. Everybody gets it. Hey, <laughs> you get therapy and you get therapy. Everybody gets it. Um, I just think that it's important this week that we pay attention to our mental space, that we sit down and that we're not only a friend to another person, but we are a friend to ourselves. And we understand what we're investing in this week. And it needs to be you first, unless you have a child and then invest in the children first, then yourself. Then it goes out to everybody else. You hear me? All right. Listen, you guys got this this week, okay? You guys got this. Not only is it going to be okay, this is about being present and cognizant and working with the energy that you've got. So don't let your fears and worries hold you back. Invest in the right things and be a good friend to yourself. 
All right, card pile number two. You guys got some interesting cards this week. Let's talk about it. Your first one is a major arcana card. Talk about major change, major evolution, major movement forward. You guys got the hanged man. He's been he's been present. Um, second card you got is the two of swords. And then finally, you guys got the ten of cups. So let's fucking talk about it. Because this one is quite interesting. Now, I do want to say, if we're looking for a yes or no this week, this would definitely be a yes around choosing what your joy, your happiness, and emotionally, intuitively, what you're drawn towards. Going with the flow, literally, it's a yes to going with the flow. I really mean that. All the way down to my taint, y'all. <laughs> okay? Like, you've got to go with the flow this week. So it's a yes to that. Any closed doors, anybody saying no, thing, obstacles, no, we don't have time, no. Mm -hmm. If you don't identify as the salmon, the fish, good luck. Congratulations and good luck because you don't have to fight bears to go home upstream. Go with the fucking flow. All right, go with the fucking flow. Um, all right, you guys. So the hanged man, this is a crazy card. It's a major arcana card. It's not a mundane one. It's not an everyday one. So this is like a huge pivot moment in our life where we're coming to the space and we got to decide which direction that we're going to go in. Now, the hanged man is a feeling that we're stuck here, that we can't move forward or we don't know how. And so this card really asks us for a different perspective. It's also a gentle reminder that you're not stuck. So this is really about the way that you're viewing the thing and that maybe we need a second set of eyes, a second opinion. We need to think or look at this from a different point of view, that kind of jam. Um, and again, too, I love saying with the hanged man, do you identify as the salmon and the fish? No? Well, then good. You don't have to fist fight a bear to go home. <laughs> I just... <laughs> small things guys <laughs> okay but <clears throat> the hanged man here is like it's really begging you to be present again because like this is something major that feels like it's holding us back and if we don't work through this obstacle we're going to sit here and just continue to feel stuck and i don't know about you but when i feel stuck i'm not necessarily thinking about options or opportunities or perspectives i'm just thinking about being stuck and you're literally wasting your fucking life doing that no thank you also <clears throat> the hanged man stands for the number 12 so I'm referencing back to the month of December, around the 12th of a month, but also one plus two equals three. I'm also going to be referencing the month of March as well. Okay. Or maybe I'm looking around uh, March the 12th or December the 3rd. Okay. Okay. Uh, with the Hank Man here. Now with the two of swords, this is a mundane card, a regular everyday card, but we're at a crossroads again. Okay. Interesting. We're at a crossroads. This is, this is, hmm. This is like full stop. I mean, look at full stop. <laughs> full stop. That's a no. All right. Not making my nips hard. Okay. <laughs> God makes me sad a little bit. <laughs> but with swords here, it's going to talk about our mental space. And so mentally, we know that something is not an option. We don't want this. And or we're having to make a choice between maybe one or two things and we don't know which way to go. We feel like we're at an impasse. Now, a lot of the advice with this is to compromise, to sit down and really look at both sides and understand what it is before you make that choice, right? Uh, but there's a blindfold over her eyes. So she's blind here to something. We don't have all the information or maybe we haven't reached out trying to gather everything that we can before we make this decision. Um, again, it's a little bit more of a difficult card. Now, I traditionally see, especially when two of swords shows up like this in between two cards, these are the two things that we are deciding between. So this looks to me this week like we're looking at, we're choosing either the hanged man being stuck or the ten of cups and literally going with the fucking flow. When also the advice for the hanged man is go with the fucking flow. But listen, it's a choose your own adventure. Not everybody's going to take that advice. You know, they might, being stuck might be like the devil that you know, or it's easier to because I'm used to that. All right. Uh, but again, the two of swords is kind of having to make a decision. Which way are we going to go? We don't know. We're at an impasse. We got to make a choice. And then y'all, one of the most beautiful cards, especially for a mundane one, the ten of fucking cups. This is just, when I say that this is beautiful on all fronts, I mean that. <laughs> okay. This card is amazing. This is a wish fulfilled. This is creative realization. This is contentment ease and bliss what i don't who's she <laughs> she doesn't go here <laughs> for most of us we're just like what <laughs> something i can only dream of and i think that's a part of the ten of cups is like there's a dream here that we really had a wish around and <clears throat> it was something that was like emotionally intuitively calling towards us we followed it we pulled that thread we put the time and the energy into it because earth and water move fucking slow Okay, they move fucking slow. Earth way more than water does, but still water takes for fucking ever. 
So with the Ten of Cups here, like again, this is something we've worked, worked long and hard on. This is emotional fulfillment. This is also the ending of a chapter and the beginning of a brand new one. So what do you want now emotionally? Now that we've reached this pinnacle, what next would you like to experience? What next intuitively are you called, you know, called towards? Um, also, too, with the addition of the number 10, uh, this is the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new one, but it's also going to reference the month of October. Now, the Two of Swords is going to reference the month of February or the second of a month. <clears throat> and again, with the Ten of Cups, October, we're looking around the 10th of a month, you get the jam. Now, if we're looking around relationships, <laughs> some, ugh, some of you guys this week are choosing between stagnation or forward movement and happiness. That's friendship, love, family. It doesn't matter here. It just really feels like we're at a crossroads with somebody and we're trying to decide which way to go. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. The hanged man is a, is a heavy hitting card. So comparatively speaking, this energetically says to me that we just keep feeling like we're getting hung up, literally. Like we don't know what to do about the situation or this person or how to handle this thing. And so we keep choosing stagnation. This is the bigger card here. It's going to speak more strongly to the energy that's going on. So it's, it's really kind of saying to you, Hey, Hey, <laughs> you're not fucking stuck. Which way do you choose? You still have a choice in this around relationships. Which way are you going to choose? Because honestly, both of these decisions are telling you to go with the fucking flow. So if there is a no here or a full stop or somebody is absolutely shut a fucking door, don't go back there and try to pry that bitch open. Stop for a second and ask yourself, is this really what I want? I don't think, I don't think that's a yes, to be honest with you. And so what are you really fighting for? What are you really fighting for? So I think for some of you guys around love and relationship this week, we've got to make a serious decision. Are we going to continue to stay stuck in this and just feel like stuck and I don't know what to do and just like not dealing with it, not facing with it and just not doing anything, being stagnant? Or are we going to choose what our happiness and our joy where the flow is? And look, I'm not saying for some of you guys that like, this is the end forever. No, this might just be a time where you just let somebody go do their fucking thing and you focus on what's happy and makes you intuitively feel like you want to be here and happy and joy filled. And then everything works or it just comes the fuck back around. When we choose the joy, when we choose what it is that we do want is when all the doorways open. When we're telling the universe, when we're trying to manifest something, we're telling the universe everything we don't want. Guess what, Allie? They're going to take us. Yeah, to the one we were telling them we didn't want. And they're saying, but you, but you said this. And we're like, but yeah, but I said I didn't want it. They're like, well, all I was hearing was you were just telling me what you what you wanted. <laughs> okay? So when it comes to the universe, when it comes to manifestation and only manifestation, focus on what you do want here. And especially around an important relationship that's in your life right now. No, it's not stagnant. Which way are you going to choose? May you please fucking choose your happiness so that you can find a better pathway here and maybe give this thing enough time to work itself the fuck out. Focus on you and what the fuck you got to do. Fair? All right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Also, honestly, I feel like that covers all love and relationships in any kind of form here. Okay. So however, if again, if this is friendship or this is family, uh, maybe this is acquaintanceship, it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, whatever amount of relationship this week, please just choose your joy and your happiness and maybe let the situation like work itself out that way and or find where the flow is here so that you can be happy. This other person is happy. Honor whatever the fuck the flow is. Not necessarily <clears throat> maybe, sorry guys, <clears throat> maybe for some of us, there's a feeling here, I'll only be happy if I have this one thing in my head, not really thinking for a second, is this really what I want? Or am I just trying to hold on to this because I don't want to let it go? So for some of you guys this week, I want to say to you, we got to challenge some of these things that we're saying that we want. Is that really what you fucking want? When was the last time that you tuned in emotionally and really said, hey, does this make me happy? And if that's a hard no, then maybe we just need to take a step back for a second let this thing work itself the fuck out. And then maybe we can reconvene at a later time. Okay. But yeah, there's the end of a cycle coming up here and you got to make a choice, which way you're going to go. Are you going to continue to stay stuck? Or are you going to do what's best for you? Love you. Mean it. <laughs> All right. Around work and career, kind of the same jam, kind of the same jam. Uh, for some of you guys this week, um, it kind of feels like we're being, feels like there might be some competition for an opportunity here. 
Or maybe somebody here at work or higher up maybe is deciding which position they want to put us in. Or maybe for some of you guys, you're deciding which position you want to take. Can I please fucking beg you again to go towards what the fuck it is you do want? If you are constantly chasing safety and security, guess what? You're always going to be chasing safety and security. You're right. And it's going to be a never ending loop that takes you down back alleys you don't want to fucking be. No, thank you. If you choose your happiness, your joy, what actually you would love to fucking do, the safety and security fucking follows. I, tell me to fuck off if that's not true. But so far in my life, that has been fucking legit. Okay? Not only with me, but the people that are around me as well. Okay? Okay. Seriously, though, around work and career, choose the path that doesn't make you feel like you're beating your head against a fucking brick wall. What is the thing that speaks to your heart and soul that makes you feel excited that you would want to get up every day to go and do the thing that you wouldn't mind eating the poop sandwich on because you just get to do the thing and you don't give a fuck. Do you know what I'm saying? Do not choose this hung up dead man energy just because it's safer or easier. Honey, you just don't. You Do you really have the time for that? Do you know when you're going to exit Mama Earth so you know how much time you have that you can just waste on being in a space that is not fulfilling, that is not letting you flow freely, that's not letting you be yourself, and you literally can't move onwards and upwards? Nah. Nah. No thanks. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm telling y'all, choose your joy, choose your happiness, because everything else follows after that. You deserve to be happy. Okay? Make the decision. Make the decision. Make the fucking decision. Uh, maybe again, again, with this reference, with the hanged man back to the number 12, the month of December, maybe February is when we got to make that decision. Or maybe around the second of a month with the two of swords. Then the ten of cups is saying, like, this needs to be around our happiness. Okay? And the end of a cycle here where we're, we're not continuing to choose things that don't choose us back or that really aren't fucking for us just because it feels safe and we know it. We're just going to keep choosing it. <clears throat> girl that was so 2019 right our Kira just showed up and she's yelling she's like yeah 2019 fuck that noise who's that hoe <laughs> all right okay <laughs> all right for those of you guys around health and healing though oh this is interesting some of you guys need to get your lymph nodes drained i know that's a weird thing i just fucking said okay but some of you guys just need to drain your fucking lymph nodes or make sure that your lymph nodes are draining if they are not, maybe we need to double check our allergies. Maybe we get a drainage massage, something going on here that can help us to get the, get the fluids moving in our body again. For some of you guys, there's going to be a fluid issue this week. Maybe for some of you guys, your ankles are swelling. Make sure you go and get your fucking heart checked. Do not mess around with that. Get your heart and your liver checked, especially if your feet and your ankles are swelling. Go get your heart and your liver checked. Thank you. Ten of Cups is also going to talk about our emotions, y'all. So guess what? I'm the Oprah of therapy again. Some of y'all need some fucking therapy. Okay? Maybe here with the Hanged Man and the Two of Swords, we didn't feel chosen by Father. Then we got to deal with that emotionally. Okay? Because it's also affecting the choices that we're making out in the world. Um, maybe for some of you guys emotionally, it just feels like we're in a stalemate around family or it just feels like family didn't choose us or family's not moving forward with us. And we've got a lot of fucking feelings around that as you fucking should. So again, sit down and deal with this. Um, some of you guys, that's weird because card pawn number one brought this up too, but, um, some of you guys are having some eye issues this week. So going, some of you guys might have cataracts. Some of you guys might just have to get like that LASIK surgery. Some of you guys might have to do some kind of corrective surgery on the eye. Okay. Um, I just, I feel like everything's going to be okay. All right. Uh, just go towards the doctor places and spaces that have amazing reviews. Maybe getting referrals from friends here to help choose the right space. Okay. But we can no longer sit on this. We got to do something about it. No more hanged man bullshit. Go and get this taken care of so that you can fucking see again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for health? I would just say, man, all right, last thing on health. Some of you guys are feeling like there's a father here that like a father, a father, or maybe just a male, an important male in our life right now that we feel like we don't know how to tell this person they need to go get help. Maybe emotionally, maybe they need emotional help. Um, they're fucking maybe mental and emotional health. 
Um, this person is like literally just fucking their shit up really bad. And so we feel like it, we're at an impasse. We don't know how to bring it up to this person, but I really think just telling them, I would not say something to this effect. I would not be saying something to you if I didn't give a fuck. I would just sit here and watch you dissolve into a puddle of poop. If I didn't give a fuck, I'm saying something because I'm trying to help the situation. Or I'm trying to help you. Or I'm trying to let you know something's off and I don't want to see you fucking backslide off the hill. You know what I mean? So just make sure that you are communicating, saying what's most important, doing it in like a loving, caring, kind fashion. No ultimatums, no ultimatums, no ultimatums. Okay. All right, guys, for anything else this week, motherfucking trust yourselves for fuck sake. Go towards where the yeses are coming in. Take the fucking blindfold off and look at the fucking situation. You can no longer keep your head stuck in the fucking sand. Look at it. Pay attention to what your intuition is saying and say yes to yourself around what it is that you do want. No more holding back. No more bullshit. No more knocking on closed doors, begging to come back in. Baby, we don't do that. We, you're too, you are too beautiful. You are too fucking hot. I don't care what gender you are. You are too fucking hot. To be doing that fucking shit. Okay? Go with the fucking flow. Go towards the yeses. And whatever the fuck you do, trust yourself. And finally, card pile number three. Uh, you guys got another interesting card pull this week. Uh, you guys got the three of cups. Your next card is the nine of wands. And then finally, you guys got a major arcana card too. Talk about major change, major evolution, major movement forward. Y'all got temperance. Hey, hey, hey. All right. If we were looking for a yes or no this week, this would definitely be a yes on not giving up on something. Feeling like, <laughs> feeling like that's spirit fucking led. That's for goddamn sure. Bringing back the balance. This would be a yes this week to bringing back balance and not giving up on an important friendship or opportunity or person or whatever the fuck with the three cups. Yes to that this week. All right. Um, so the three cups, whenever it comes up, y'all, this is another celebratory card. This card is gorgeous. Uh, this is like, this is always what I, look at these alcoholics, but for real though, <laughs> all right. Like this is usually friends going out and drinking with each other. Like everybody having a good time, maybe too much of a good time. Okay. Everybody's just out here partying. But again, this is celebratory. So this is something that we've been through, we've been working on. And again, with cups here, this is taking a while to get up to. Traditionally, this is a card around our friends and our friendships. Um, this is also one of my cards of reconciliation. And so especially if there's been a period of separation, we've been fighting with friends or people that are deeply important with us or that we just have a good time with, that we love being in their company. Um, it's just saying that there's going to be a reconciliation coming up here. Uh, also, too, with the, traditionally with the number three, I'm looking towards the month of March, the third of a month or three weeks, three months, three days, you get the jam. Now, with cups here, this would take a little bit more time. So I'm looking towards weeks and months. OK, um, if it's on that that level uh, now with the nine of wands um, with wands here, uh, this is fire. This is spirit, y'all. I see this is spirit led, spirit fed. Uh, this is our energy. This is what we're manifesting in the world. What are we creating? What are we manifesting? And so it's asking us to be here and to really take stock of where the fuck we're at at this moment because all the fire signs are very, very future oriented. So if I ain't moving forward, I'm moving backwards. If you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> all right, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> that kind of jam with the fire signs. I wouldn't be surprised if Ricky Bobby was an Aries. <laughs> like straight up, he's got to be an Aries. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, but with the nine of wands here, this is my can't stop, won't stop card. I won't give up. And it's just saying there's going to be one more obstacle here before we reach the thing. Just make sure we don't exhaust the fuck out of ourselves. Even though we are tired, we've been fighting. There's just saying one more obstacle and then you got your fucking thing. The only warning here is traditionally the 10 of wands comes after this, which is exhaustion, overwhelmed. Uh, we need to reach out and ask other people for help, okay? So how interesting that we started off with the Three of Cups, talking about multiple people here, and the Nine of Wands, can't stop, won't stop, that maybe we should ask somebody for help, okay? Make sure we make it to that end point. Um, also, too, with the number nine here, and we're going to reference the month of September, the ninth of a month, nine days, nine weeks, because fire is fast. I'm looking at nine days, nine weeks, okay? Something quickly moving here, or and or the month of September. And then finally, you guys got that major arcana card. Again, this is huge. This is not everyday bullshit. 
This is a crossroads that we're at and we got to make a fucking decision. Now, temperance is the card of balance. This is also one of my cards that this is, again, spirit led and spirit fed. Spirit is very much at the head of this. So to whomever pulled card pile number three this week, hear me right the fuck now. When I tell you that your loved ones in spirit are trying to guide you towards your greatness, they are trying to help you recognize where your strengths are where your loved ones are telling you not to give up and they are trying to guide the fucking way. Look for your fucking signs from your loved ones in spirit. And I would say with this, with temperance and the nine of wands, um, again, maybe this is weird bird activity. Uh, maybe this is like four leaf clover showing up. Maybe this is fucking rainbows popping the fuck out of people's buttholes. You get the jam. <laughs> hey, however the fuck those signs show up, listen to them. Spirit is literally trying to fucking guide you and recognize too that these, whenever they show up, they're yes signs. So pay attention to what you're thinking and fucking speaking so that with weird bird activity, you're taking that leap of faith with what the fuck you're thinking about. Or the ladybug shows up and you're saying yes to uh, whatever it is here. Like maybe you want to start a business and you're like, ooh, good luck around that. Let me start that now. Thanks, grandma. Do you know what I'm saying? Pay attention to the world around you, y'all, because it's speaking to you every fucking day. And specifically for card pile number three, your loved ones in spirit. No more ignoring, okay? Uh, but temperance is balance. This is making sure that everything actually makes sense. We're coming back into balance. Things aren't out of whack here. We can't deal with that shit anymore. This is also taking uh, what we're thinking and speaking about and turning it into something real. So this is one of the manifestation cards. It's asking you, if you are not present here in this very moment around what you're doing and you're speaking about, you're going to fuck this shit up. Be here and be present so that you can be balanced in your approach so that you can take what you've been thinking about and make it real and tangible. This is the moment. Also, temperance stands for the number 14. So I'm looking for these themes to come up around the 14th of a month. One plus four equals five. I'm looking to the month of May. Okay. Now, if we were looking around love and relationships this week, this kind of makes me feel that like there's a reconciliation coming up for some of y'all. And this is very fucking spirit led. This is kind of feeling like maybe we've been off on our own and things have been really difficult without the other person. Three of Cups is saying like we're missing those good times. We're missing the connection. We're missing the fun. We're missing our friends and our friendship group. But maybe we chose to take a solo journey here with the Knight of Wands and it's been lonely and it's been hard. Uh, we really don't want to do this anymore. And Temperance is saying, listen, and literally your loved ones in spirit are like, what are you doing? Go back in there and talk to your people. Go and have some fun. Get over this last obstacle of yourself. Forgive me. I know that's violent. <laughs> All right. Get over this last obstacle for some of you guys, which is yourself. Sit down and tell your friends or tell your people, listen, I just had to take a moment. I'm having a hard time or I'm going through something difficult or whatever's going on here. This feels like an obstacle or just difficulty. She's got an umbrella. Maybe there's grief for some of you guys. Maybe you lost something or someone and you just needed to take a while to sit back and take care of yourself. But man, you've been missing your people and your connection lately. I'm begging you and so are your people in spirit to bring back the balance. Find a way to communicate and party with your people again. Sit down, bring back the balance by having an important conversation, speaking on what happened. And if you need help here to get out of a difficult place, ask for help from your people that you know actually have your back. Who are those people? It's time to call on them now. Okay. I want to say too around love and relationships as well. For some of you guys, you've been working long and hard at this. Okay. Okay. Listen, for some of you guys, hold on, hold on for what I said for a second, because something else is coming through. For some of you guys, we lost a friend in spirit. We have a friend in spirit. And I think for some of you guys, this is your friend in spirit coming through to say hello today. Okay. They're telling for some of you guys that there's one more obstacle to overcome before you finally make it. And then there's going to be a huge celebration. So continue to trust in yourself and what you're going towards here. Yes, it's felt lonely. Or I know since I've been gone, it's felt very lonely. But please know that I'm with you on this journey. Celebrate. You're moving literally towards celebratory times. Sit down, do the work, overcome this last obstacle. You're almost fucking there. I fucking love that. I fucking love that. Okay. Uh, for some of you guys, it may not have been a friend that we lost in spirit. Maybe this feels like the temperance here to me, uh, maybe a mother or a mother figure here. And she was also like a friend, somebody I used to also party with and have a good time. I just loved her energy and being with her. She was not only my mother or a caregiver or someone important to me here, but she was also my friend. Okay. So again, she's just telling you, don't give up. 
one more fight. We fucking got this. Um, don't be afraid to work with me in spirit. I'm already there. But guys, when we work consciously with spirit, fucking miracles occur. Fucking miracles occur. Give it a chance. Ask them for what the fuck you need. And then here's the other caveat. Make sure that like, and especially if you know what was important to them in this world, maybe they fucking love dolphins. I don't know. Get out there and either spend your time helping dolphins, donate energy, money, time to dolphins or the water. Do things out in the physical world uh, as almost like a love token for the person that you lost here that they would love or that would have supported them or that they would have been over the fucking moon about. Okay, so if you're working with them, ask them for help and then make sure that you're putting good stuff back out in the world in their name. I love that. Okay. Um, anything else around love and relationships? Yeah, this just feels like maybe for some of you guys, there's been a period of separation from partying, having a good time, your friends, and you're just feeling lonely. You're feeling by yourself. Temperance is saying it's not supposed to be all or nothing, honey. Find the balance here. What's the middle in between? Get to know your own fucking story so that you know your fucking energy and what the fuck you can handle and what the fuck you want here. Okay? Okay. Um, if you guys, although I still feel like card pile number three, some of you guys are asking around like love. I would say with this card pile, this feels like spirit trying to bring you guys back together. And I think they're trying to remind you guys of the good times. Okay. Here's what's important with this is like, you guys have been working at this or have been together for a long time. Somehow the number nine, uh, September, maybe nine years, nine months, you, you kind of get the jam here. Uh, something's been going on with this, this thing. Maybe we thought we were going to walk away from it. Okay. Maybe we tried, but again, it just feels like temperance is saying, come back. You've got people here that love you, that support you, that are still your fucking friends. What are you doing walking away from this? Okay. Some of you guys are on love relationships. We need to sit down and make sure, like, are we leaving the situation because this is no good and it really doesn't align with us? Or are we leaving the situation maybe because we're afraid and fearful and this almost feels too good to be true? Okay. For some of you guys, I don't think for everybody, but for some of you guys, it's going to resonate. Okay. Now around work and career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of you guys have been trying to find a fucking job. Please don't give up because the right space is coming and you're going to love the fucking people that you work with. Okay. If you guys are having a hard time again, maybe do a fixed candle. Maybe talk to your loved ones in spirit. Do something here extra spirit wise to kind of bring in the balance or help tip things more in your favor. You know, if we need that, but I'm telling you guys, um, the end of the hard times is coming here. Celebrations are coming. The rebalancing here around work and career. Some of you guys might actually be working in a group setting with other people. This is going to be a blast. It's not going to be easy work. It's not. But it's it might literally involve spirit in some way, shape, or form. Uh, again, with temperance. Uh, maybe there, we're waiting for another person to come onto the team that brings that balance. Maybe you're that person. Or we're waiting for another person to come on to do that. Uh, but guys, this is gorgeous around work and career. Uh, this feels like especially blessed with anything, working in a group setting with other people, um, not having to go it alone. And again, some weird element here, it'd be their spirit is bringing us together. This is spirit centered. Maybe we're working with spirit um, in some way, shape or form. Um, and or the energy here of somebody coming in or you coming in actually balances this out. And just, oh, chef's kiss. This feels really fucking good to me. Again, with the emphasis on the month of March here, 9 September, Temperance, the number 14, uh, but also breaks down to the number 5. So uh, March, September, May. Okay. Okay. Now around health. Some of you guys, this is a mother figure this week. Oh, y'all. Okay. Um, for some of you guys this week, we've got a mother figure. She might have a drinking problem, like straight up. We might have alcoholism. That we've been doing this for a very long time. She, This isn't new. This is nothing new. Okay. So we've been at this for a very long time. I think our body is literally starting to give up here on this female or this mother figure, this important female in our life with the temperance card here. Um, her body, man, she just doesn't have much fight left in her or this woman just doesn't have the health to support that lifestyle anymore. It ain't fucking working. And with temperance showing up here, again, this is like spirit led. Uh, we're bringing back in the balance or we might have to have a conversation here with an important female or mother figure this week to let her know that like, hey, I love you. I support you. You don't have to do this by yourself. 
get get back the balance here that you need and just know that spirit is guiding all of this. Again, I just feel like there's a mother figure here um, guiding a lot of this for some of you guys, or it's a female here in spirit, okay? I know I got a 50-50 chance there. <laughs> it just feels very female-centered to me for you guys. Um, around health, okay, anything else for health here? Honestly, and for some of you guys, I feel like my prescription to you is to go and have a good fucking time. For some of you guys, you've been so holed away, trying to take care of things, maybe even working on yourselves, trying to rebalance your lives. A part of that rebalancing and getting to a good place is still going out and having a good time. You don't have to drink if you don't want to. You don't have to do all that. That's just a stupid joke I was making with the three of cups, okay? Because it's cups, it's water, you get the jam, okay? Uh, but here, this really is just celebration, having a good time. Go out there and, and have a good time with your people and, and just know that like... Life is about the balance. So how do we how do we go and get into a good ebb and flow of our life so that we're both taking care of our needs and then when the time asks us to sit down and reflect, we do that. When the world asks us to go back out and be a part of it, we do that. And then we just pay attention to the tune and the time. How do we come more in balance with ourselves this week so that we can pay attention to the timing of our fucking life so that we're not left too long in the partying phase and we lose opportunities or we you're being frivolous or lose too much time in the healing it phase and we miss out on everybody in the lives and everything else going on around us. There has to be a middle space. So I think for you guys, a lot of you guys are on health this week. If you're not dealing with an important mother figure, important female here, uh, maybe this more has to do with yourself. Uh, just finding that balance in life, knowing when to act, when to chill, uh, when to go outside and have a good time, and when to be at home. Like just know what your own personal ebb and flow is so that you can get into the rhythm of it. And if you need help with that, ask for fucking help. Ask for fucking help. You don't have to do this all by yourself. Anything else this week, though? I don't know. That feels pretty good to me, to be honest, y'all. All right? So just pay attention, card pile number three. Again, whatever we've been lurk working towards here, too. Anything else. I think whatever we've been working hard towards, we're going to get a celebration at the end of this. Okay? And then again, it just feels like Spirit's been guiding us this whole way. And if you've been listening to Spirit and saying yes the whole time, letting them guide your heart and your soul, I mean, baby, you're in the right places doing the right things at the right time. So just hold on tight for some of you guys for what you've been working so hard on because that celebration is coming for this, okay? That party, that celebration, the fuck yeah, is coming and a rebalancing act is, is showing the fuck back up in your life. In the meantime, before that thing shows back up, what work are you doing right now to make sure that you're able to receive that balanced time and to keep it, okay? Okay. All right, you guys. I hope to God any and all of that made sense. Uh, let me know. All feedback helps me to grow. I love you guys. Let me know how it was for you. Let me know what pile you picked. If it resonated for you. Did it make your nips hard? I hope so. <laughs> All right. I love you guys so much. And I'll talk with you soon. Bye. <laughs>